I only decided to do a video version of this like halfway through playing the game so I don't have as much footage variety as normal and there are a lot of boss spoilers. Now I originally wrote this review for RPG site so you can go there if that's what you prefer. Being a fan of One Piece probably means that I was likely to be either extra critical of this RPG adaptation or alternatively more lenient due to my personal attachment to the characters. Now after having played One Piece Odyssey, I think I'm leaning on the more critical side. This is the first major turn-based RPG for the series, at least as far as I'm aware that's probably some Japan exclusive mobile games, with the mega hit shonen manga more often adapted into action titles instead. I was pretty excited for this game with my only concern being that the main development team Ilka was largely only known for their support work and more recently the Pokemon Pearl and Diamond remakes, which got a mixed reception. I have played all their Voice of Cards games though and I liked them, but this is quite a different beast. The setup and story overall is pretty basic. Captain Luffy of the Straw Hat Pirates spots a strange island and demands they land there before they're pulled into a storm and shipwrecked. A strange girl called Lim separates the pirate crew from their powers, which is represented in this game by being set back to level 1 and having very few skills. And throughout the game you follow this pattern of fighting the island guardian Colossi and travelling to Memoria, dreamlike lands made out of their collective memories in order to regain their scattered powers. Though the events in these memories aren't always exactly the same as what actually happened in the past. Probably because Zola is so bad at directions. In terms of where this story sits in the One Piece timeline, Odyssey is basically like most of the films in that it isn't actually canon and only exists somewhere between arcs where it could never make perfect sense. It is at the very least after Dressrosa, but based on something Sanji says it could almost be after Whole Cake Island if it weren't for a missing crew member. For One Piece fans you'd know that the crew temporarily splits up around that part of the story so technically it doesn't cleanly fit anywhere. Personally I find it difficult to recommend One Piece Odyssey to those who aren't already fans of the series and not just because it's a mostly bland RPG, outside of the cast. For those potentially interested in One Piece, Odyssey isn't really a good way to get into it because even if you don't mind spoilers and knowing arc plot points well ahead of time, the minor differences that occur in Memoria may just will confuse you. Lim does view some slideshow-esque flashbacks to remind people of what happens during these stories as each trip to Memoria only covers parts of the events for each arc, but it's not quite adequate for the uninitiated. I found the combat to be fairly easily and that's primarily because it's quite basic. The battles use a paper scissors rock system with character types. Being at a type disadvantage means you'll deal hardly any damage and take quite a lot in return. However, you can freely switch your characters around their location on the battlefield with some exceptions and from the reserve party without taking any penalty, so there's absolutely no reason not to do so. One thing to also add with the being able to swap characters over is that there's like a bond system that builds up as you do combat effectively and you can use your bond move just to move a character to another spot. The battles are all split up into small groupings of your party and enemies and in order to join another area you'll need to either clean up who's in front of you or use a long ranged attack. There's an option to change your formation which basically sets up the chances of characters being further away from enemies or closer to one another, but I hardly used it. One thing you'll notice is that you can't move back to freed up areas, as they basically no longer exist. So the only strategy I really employed was during boss fights I tried to keep Chopper away from the boss for as long as I could, and also made lots of use of Nami's Mirage Tempo. Skills use technical points which are easily restored using your basic attack. Of course there's a small number of elements to which certain enemies may be resistant to and a few status effects with bleeding being the most annoying. Throughout combat encounters you may be given a bonus objective such as taking down a suddenly powered up enemy before a party member fates or taking them out with a specific character. Doing so gives you bonus XP but there's no penalty for failing which was good when it wanted me to use Brook to save Robin against an enemy he could barely scratch. I think the funniest of these is when you get bonus points just for healing a low HP party member. While that system does encourage you to do things differently, your strategy remains largely the same. There's certainly no need to grind and eventually I ended up skipping every other combat encounter. Each character's individuality is represented well within the combat system. Usopp is the only one able to do his basic attack from far away and Chopper is your only healer. In particular, Luffy can go into his second gear for 3 turns though there's not much other than TP stopping you from doing it again immediately. A chopper can use Monster Point turning him into a massive tank but then it restricts him from using his healing skills. Almost every move characters use in the source material is eventually present in the game and they are very well animated. The boss fights are perhaps the biggest disappointment of Odyssey, effectively being merely slightly stronger enemies that don't make you vary your tactics or have phases in the slightest, unless the phase for you is fighting them halfway down 
and then the health refilling with them now being only slightly stronger. They're also susceptible to items that reduce their defense, meaning the one tougher encounter I had partway through the game was immediately diminished. Outside of the combat, there's a minor exploration and crafting system for equipment, food, and other items. There's also a few dungeons in game offering basic puzzles to solve. While exploring, you'll need to switch to Chopper to get through tight spaces, play as Usopp to shoot an item down, or switch to a character like Sanji who has spotted an extra ingredient. You'll mostly run around as Luffy because he's the only one who can grapple hook him around certain spots in the world. Exploring is rather important as within the areas you'll require character specific cubes which are their skill points, and further progression opens up the ability to add these skill points more. Side quests are also pretty basic, but the bounty hunts can be a little fun as the enemies you fight style themselves after real villains destroy hats have fought before. I had no issues running the game on my PlayStation 5, barring one soft lock just after a save point. I did notice one really odd thing in that when I missed an attack, it would say attack ineffective even if I had used it before, and the one time an attack was ineffective, it said miss. So they were likely placed in the wrong spot, that, but that may easily confuse players at least momentarily. The equipment system is grid based, but there's an auto equip option allowing you to save yourself the trouble of trying to fit things in ideally. I did use the auto equip for defense option once, and then the enemy I was facing could knock me out in one hit instead of two, so I'm not sure how good the non balanced options are. The game looks really nice, easily fitting into the art style of the original material. Personally, I didn't like how much the new enemy creatures looked, but not everything in One Piece is made to look pretty. I've already mentioned the animations, but for One Piece fans, they are a real treat. Even if I do wish the fast forward option was a bit faster. Robin gets her signature grab attack, which is fun to witness, but even in her large attacks, you can see the multiple limbs turning into one giant one before landing the hit. Of course, the dub cast of One Piece is behind the Japanese airing, so perhaps no surprise this game doesn't feature them as an option, nonetheless it is disappointing. Outside of in-battle dialogue, such as enemies swearing on defeat, every other thing said is subtitled. One thing I really liked was the soundtrack. They aren't quite of the playlist-worthy level, but I am likely to listen to the tracks every so often. The songs all worked really well for the setting, with the various instruments working well to add to the adventurous flair. One Piece Odyssey unfortunately fits the it takes 20 hours to get good shoe, which for a just barely over 40-ish hour game, for me it took 46 hours, it's not worth the effort. Aside from the introduction segment, the first memory of Travel 2 is Alabasta, <laughs> which consists of massive desert tracks and lots of backtracking. At almost any point where you have to backtrack, the game will disable fast travel. This whole adventure feels like it has a ton of missed opportunities, especially when it comes to the use of crew members. Frankie and Brooke don't join your party until very close to the end, meaning you to miss out on their reaction to places they haven't been to. And in the case of Robin and Alabaster and Usopp and Water 7, they stay away from the party for most of that adventure, making the alternate experience not that different in the end. I did find it took a little bit too long for the characters' personalities to shine through, mostly the women were carrying it at the start, but once it did, the team dynamic was present through every minor piece of dialogue. In terms of the story, I think it's fairly basic. Uh, my husband watching me complained that you didn't really know the villain or their motivations for quite a while, but to me the adventure was mostly just about going through the memories and getting their powers back. But it's, it's just okay. I was also disappointed that certain moments were not made into cutscenes or even playable segments, such as one point where you say Princess Vivi, it merely tells you in text what you did. This is especially agitating after all the time spent combing through the sand for minor things in instead of playing what could have been a more fun rescue mission. Later on, these sorts of events shook things up a bit more, and there was one distinctly fun part for a fan in Dressrosa, when they just didn't do enough of that. Through the animations alone, I can see there was a lot of care put into creating this game with some serious attention to detail, even down to Sanji refusing to damage the sole female enemy in the game. But there are some very basic design decisions, especially regarding game progression, that hamper the experience greatly. The backtracking continues throughout, even all the way to the very end, to the point that I wondered what the extra padding was for. I'm not even interested in the post-game quest of fighting tougher opponents since all the boss fights were so basic. The great cast just isn't enough to not make certain parts of the game feel like a chore. For the One Piece fan who can handle a bit of tedium and lackluster bosses, I can recommend it. But for anyone else, I wouldn't suggest it. I give One Piece Odyssey a 6 out of 10. Bye.